Hi, this is Gene Horn. I'm here in Train Sim World 2020 doing an operation, but while I'm doing this task, uh, running the engine, moving some cars around, shuffling and all that, I want to talk about the recent question and answer we had from Dovetail Games concerning Train Sim World 2. So I have some criticisms about Train Sim World 2 that I want to go over you some of the points, my feelings that I've heard and listened to other criticisms, uh, but I don't think most of these were mentioned, or at least some of them were, uh, but uh, I want to go ahead and talk about those, and, and as we do, we're going to go ahead and move some cars around and train some World 2020. Now, I want to start out by saying I am definitely looking forward to Train Sim World 2. I'm excited about it. I don't mind that we're getting a new game. I'm okay with it. I'm looking forward to some of the some of the new things that we're going to be able to, some of the potential that should come out of it. Um, um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it, to be honest with you. But here's some of the things that concern me uh, concerning Train Sim World 2 question and answer time and uh, we'll kind of go through those we're going to back up here in this harbor area and the Oakvale subdivision of uh, Train Sim World 2020 <laughs> I may get twisted between the two games but uh, as we're playing Train TSW 2020 uh, I'll be talking about what we're doing as well as uh, my criticism on the game coming out. It's now July of 2020 and we're looking forward to a release of Train Sim World 2 on August 18th, I believe. Right around the same time, we'll have a new Microsoft Flight Simulator and that's going to be awesome time. So here we are in the uh, Oakvale subdivision, early morning, uh, I'm in the free room scenario, free to play as you can see on the screen. I bring up the HUD, that's my personal radio while I'm out on the camera boom, which is uh, keyboard number three so I can ride the back of the train and still control the train by, in my mind, uh, uh, talking to the engineer up in the engine. But uh, So we got one car to go half a car truck that'll do yeah we're gonna couple up to these uh, cars here and see if we can pull them out and we'll, we'll work on this task for a little bit and then come back to train sim world 2 and some of my thoughts concerning that the 8 key sets me free where the the two and the three put you on a camera boom. Uh, you can move around with that, but you're free, uh, free flying with the with the when you get on the eight key. Uh, I had trouble with these cars uh, the night before, and uh, they were dragging. And I had to separate this one car out and went free. But I'm checking all the handbrakes. And they seem to be released as far as I can tell something is wrong here I don't know what's going on I got it on throttle 2 and uh, it is not wanting to pull uh, free something is not right go through here and check each of these brakes that one's released I'll go ahead and double check it release it again and come along and just keep working on these see if I can get them to come free well while I'm doing that I'll uh, see we'll start off with some of my thoughts on the recent question and answer that came out this is about the third week of July now but uh, just last last week uh, Dovetail Games had a question and answer time uh, and they were talking they were actually showing the high-speed train going through Germany now that's fabulous I'm looking forward to, to playing that for sure um, and then they were talking about the scenario editor by the way uh, the, the last video I did I had uh, talked about 
how great this free roam that I'm in here now in, in Train Simulator 2020 this uh, area that we're playing in uh, that I didn't think I had a fuel uh, station to, to fuel up your train it does I found that it's on the far side of this uh, of this route but it, it certainly does have a fuel station so it looks like all of these cars have been released and let's go ahead and see if we get this train going making sure all the brakes are lines are free see I got it on second throttle and it is not moving and this is kind of aggravating I don't know what can be wrong I just don't know well there it goes and notch it up to three it's not that much of a grade and you know uh, one of the things that we're looking forward to is the physics of loaded cars and empty cars are going to be more accurately done in the train sim world 2 coming out and that's going to change everything I, I imagine there'll be a way to tell if a car is loaded or not um, some of these cars, the tanker cars, you can look inside. The uh, the auto carrier cars, you can look inside. And open hoppers, of course, you can look inside. I don't know about these closed hoppers, uh, how you know if they're loaded. But, you know, th this is not right. You know, I got it on throttle um, set on three. And you can hear it. Can you hear it? It's just something is squealing and it is not happy. Uh, we're going to go along here and uh, see if we can figure this thing out. <clears throat> well, one of the things uh, they talked about after they got talking about the new the, the new train sim world too, and it's high speed train and it's it's longer route. I mean, these high speed trains that are going a couple I don't know how fast they go 250 kilometers an hour. Uh, whenever uh, you know if they're going that fast there's no sense in having a short route you, you wouldn't be able to really take it up to speed and do anything so I'm looking forward to them having a longer route particularly for these high-speed trains uh, that doesn't change the route sizes of the the other routes that come with it you know um, you know sand patch grade and that heavy haul or whatever the name of that route was uh, that was the longest route they had before and I think that's only 20 miles or something so uh, it's the biggest criticism that we have from uh, to fans of train simulation is the uh, dovetail games it just has not put out uh, any routes of length um, I myself I, I understand that I kind of I agree for sure but my biggest criticism is the uh, is the, the freedom to go around and drop off freight and industry I mean, when you think about, uh, it's a train simulation, yeah, but what, what are trains used for in the real world? It's logistics. It's moving goods from one place to another. And uh, this, this game, uh, I, the way I sense it when I'm listening to Matt talk uh, on these uh, question and answer things, it sounds more like he's biased towards passenger trains. Now, I, I love passenger trains, all, all well and good. Uh, but they seem to be just biased that everything they talk about, you know, is t picking up passengers and dropping them off at the next station, picking up more and dropping them off at the next station and doing it in some time frame. But it completely ignores the other aspect. Uh, you know, they talk about freight once in a while. They give a, you know, kind of a cursory uh, wave. Uh, but you know freight's all about logistics logistics all about moving of goods and uh, the operations to me of, of dropping off uh, cars switching cars is is a puzzle and, and you know it to me it's it's what I love doing in coupling up and uncoupling and picking up cars and dropping them off and figuring out just how we're going to do that so uh, I am beside myself here in on this task looking to see if maybe I didn't set the engines uh, to be uh, 
paired up correctly. I don't think that's it, but I'm checking that one's set to cut out. You know, and I, you know, it all looks okay to me. And we have it set to trail six or twenty-six. I believe that's correct. Somebody can get on and mention in the comments if I'm not doing it right. I don't think it's supposed to be lead or dead. I think it's supposed to be trail six or twenty-six. Uh, for the engine that's not in control But I could be wrong about that, but I don't think that's what's dragging these cars to be honest with you Because uh, if I break one car free everything goes fine and you know, but I'm just I'm just looking it over But you know once dovetail games uh, question and answer got through with uh, a good amount of time talking about the high-speed rail and the things we can expect that's all that all sounded good to me uh, I'm not quite sure how to use that fuel gauge I was just looking at um, I've been running these trains probably not enough um, for about uh, 12 hours or so but I don't think it's enough to use up any of the fuel I thought I'd see something in the cycle but I'm not sure Anyway, um, let's keep moving this along and uh, dragging it, whatever we have to do. But after they got in question and answer and got through the high speed route and some of the good things that we can see, they start talking about the scenario editor. Now the scenario editor, uh, it's fabulous that we're finally getting something. But we're not getting, uh, as I think we all know, we're not gaining a route builder. So there's no route build, builder. So that's certainly a criticism. You don't need me to tell you. I think we all we, we realize that. Um, but we, even for a scenario editor, uh, I was, I was kind of disappointed from what I'm hearing. And what I'm hearing is uh, you, you can build a scenario. It's... They said it's not like quick drive, but it sounds like quick drive to me. You can basically use an existing route, uh, choose a selection of appropriate, you know, from a drop down, appropriate engines, and then choose the appropriate cars to build a consist, build your train, and then tell the train which stations you want to stop at and then where your end of line would be when you, when you finally reach your final destination. All those things are, have to be done. Uh, so you have to have an engine, you have to have uh, some sort of consist. Maybe you don't have to have a consist, but you have to give it at least one destination, and, but you can give it others. Now this sounds perfectly reasonable um, and if you're not gonna be building a route and using existing routes, it, it sounds perfectly reasonable listen to that screeching something going on here for sure but um, for passenger trains I guess is what I'm trying to say um, if you if you want to run passenger trains and, and you tell it what destination stops I you know uh, really you just kind of it's a variation on a theme of all the scenarios they've already built for you you know and the timetables they already put in place for you and so uh, I, I don't the only thing I can see that's different is being able to put on what cars you want which really doesn't mean much for a passenger train and it's great if you know you're building a freight train and that really is the big thing I'm looking forward to and using the scenario editor is being able to put on uh, a selection of cars that you know sometimes I get on these routes in train sim world 2020 and you know they don't have all the cars there I think maybe there's a way I hadn't figured out how to get some of the cars uh, that you know like there's no in this route I'm on now Oakville subdivision uh, there's no open hoppers you know and none and um, what if I want to put some open hoppers on and so I'm, I'm so this new scenario editor is coming out with train sim world 2 I'm very excited that I'm going to be able to select what cars and build the train and build the longer train. I think we can build them up to 40 cars. Actually, I'm not sure there's a limit, although there's recommendations because the more cars you have, the I think it, it hits the uh, performance. So we'll have to we'll have to figure out all that out and see. 
but um, you know it's got me wondering this is a beautiful morning uh, we have here uh, in the Oakdale subdivision and it's a little after 6 a.m. about quarter after so next time we bring up the HUD we'll take a look and see what time it is I started this um, free roam scenario about 10 o'clock the previous day and, and was shuffling around cars uh, all through daylight hours over many days of gameplay uh, and eventually came to uh, nighttime and just let the computer sit until it got to, you know, 6 in the morning. And then uh, I saved it and started up again. Um, so I can always, and I save my save, if, if you understand what that means. Uh, your, your save, whenever you save again, it's going to write over the top of it. But by saving my save, I made a copy of this. So if I ever want to go back and just start up uh, free roam at 6 in the morning, you know, I kind of got cars where I want them now and that kind of thing. Uh, and, you know, and I'm talking about this uh, Train Sim World 2020. But back to uh, TSW2 that's going to be released in August. Um, you know, my thoughts about the uh, building uh, freight with the scenario editor is, is kind of awesome that we're going to be able to drop down and pick any cars we want and put them on there. Here's the bad news. If I got this right, we are not going to be able to put static cars on. In other words, we can build a consist behind engines and run that train, but we cannot put cars off on spurs or just sitting in the yard it's going to be an empty environment the only cars you will see are on your train and your train alone except for AI so what do I mean by that that's the other plus that we have is we can have we can design in the scenario uh, editor I don't know if it's called scenario builder or scenario editor but in that editor, we can put as many AI, we can schedule as many AI trains to go through. We can build them, tell them where to go, where to stop, and, and, and have them on a time scale and have many of them go. Uh, this opens the door, I think, for me um, to do some shenanigans that maybe break what the limitations of this game. I got some ideas how I can do that. Uh, I don't want to talk about them now because they're um, some creative things I want to try and and if they don't work, there's no sense in talking about it. But some things I want to do. They had mentioned they're curious to see what uh, what we will do with the scenario editor and what kind of creative stuff we may come up with. Uh, but they're forcing our hand here. I mean, we it's an empty environment. We're going to look at empty yards, and everything is going to be empty except for the, the the moving trains, the AI trains, and your own train. And you can only, you know, besides the AI trains, you can only build your one train. You know, which is... And uh, the, here's the other thing that I find very disappointing. Once you go uh, uh, and you build your destination, your, your, your final destination point, you have to have a final destination point. You have, have many stops in between until you get there. But once you, you reach your final destination, you can't do a return. So it's not like you can build a really long train and then drop off cars along the way uh, on spurs and then come back and, and play it on the way back, uh, switching out cars and industries, you know, and saving that, the return point as, as your gameplay. You can't do that. They, they, uh, well, there's two things to consider. One, you would only be able to do that where there's manual switches. The only place that you can do any of this kind of uh, uh, dropping off an industry is only where industries and yards where you have manual switches. And you can play all you want in, in these areas where you have manual switches. You know, forget the fact that there isn't any static trains, no other, it's a completely empty environment. You can still move around within those manual switches. So, you know, it's, it's kind of disappointing uh, that we have to play in, in, in an empty world you know as such so that's some of the criticisms but um, I'm hoping that we can figure out a way around all that uh, what's nice about what I'm playing here is I mean we will continue to have in Train Sim World 2 if you have like I do here the Oakville subdivision I will have it in Train Sim World 2 and the reason why there's a 
delaying the release date and it's been pushed out to August 18th is because they want us to be able to use that that um, a scenario editor with routes like this you know but you know I'm just thinking of this right now as I'm talking uh, you know why would I the one thing about this free roam route and uh, that I'm playing right now is there are a lot of static cars probably not as much as I'd like but there are a lot of static cars in this in this free roam environment it gives you about eight to ten kilometers or more uh, to play in um, not mentioning the rest of the Oakville route this subdivision but just down in this, this area here where the harbor is uh, there are a lot of cars now if I go ahead and use the scenario editor it was going it's gonna wipe it clean It'll completely wipe it clean there won't be any cars at all in this area where we have all these manual switches that we can get out and, and play in and not worry about um, you know getting blocked or stopped because of a, of a signal somewhere and so uh, you know what good is that what good is playing this area uh, that I'm playing right now in Train Sim World 2 using the scenario editor if I'm not going to have any cars anywhere except for the ones I put behind a couple engines you know, I don't know if you can go crazy and build a train with, you know, four engines or six engines and 150 cars. You know, maybe if you can do something crazy like that, then you can separate it all out. I mean, but then you're kind of back right where we are right now where, uh, in this game of uh, TSW 2020. Uh, still can't go past singles or anything. So I'm not quite sure that we're getting much of anything with this scenario editor that's coming out you know uh, and think about it I mean you're they're gonna wipe the route clean and then you choose what engine and what consist you put on there that's great because now for the first time I can choose my cars but wow what a limitation what a limitation so yeah um, talked about um, the no return from once you hit your destination you can't go back and rework it you know you're not able to do that I, I don't know I mean five years ago in in real works I mean I, I think it was real works at the time it may have been before you know train train uh, sim took over but back in uh, maybe it was with train sim there was the ability back in the 2015 2016 time frame that yeah you had limitations where there was AI trains and 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 you were blocked by singles but you can pull up to a single and request request a single clearance and you know that was awesome if it, you know if there wasn't another train that was in that block or the next two blocks it would it would clear it for you and you can go through so you just stopped at the single and you radioed in and in a sense you you know you just you use your command keys and ask for clearance and sometimes you had to wait but after a while you can get cleared uh, and if, you know I don't know I don't get enough viewership because I don't post every week but you know if somebody from dovetailed games actually heard my my rant here um, I mean that would be the one thing I would say hey why not uh, can, is it possible for you to put in uh, a way for us to request clearance I mean right now the only control we have at this of the game is from the engineer seat really from the engineer seat there's no control tower uh, there's no ability to you know contact them or to get clearance or any of that or you know reroute reroute <laughs> passenger trains on the fly none of that can be done you know and you know somebody had mentioned that uh, I should take a look of, uh, at another train simulator uh, run a and I did I, I gave that quite a bit of a look there is no doubt uh, let me break from that thought but there is no doubt right now that I am pushing like crazy this we're screaming we're screeching I'm doing all I can to to get this this handful of cars 
uh, pushed into this this siding here uh, I, I'm gonna have to figure out what to do um, and what is wrong I don't know I've checked each car so uh, I'm gonna be pushing it here I got to do a run around grab these tanks and then take the tanks and bring them on over to the fill station and then you're gonna watch me do an operation with the filling but uh, that's where we're at right now and pushing these cars up we're about a half car away a little more you got a good truck to go and that'll do all right so we coupled up these uh, I don't know why we coupled them up because I, I'm gonna have to come back and uncouple them. but I, I kind of just wanted to see uh, this one was applied I, I like to put on the handbrakes on the ones that are on sidings like this for you know part of the part of the immersion my experience with this particular yard if you release the brakes uh, the line will start moving back a little bit but uh, it is something is locked up so what we're going to do uh, I'll continue talking about Train Sim World 2 and what we're going to do is run around these pick up these tankers uh, break them loose again uh, oh I know why I coupled up I have to push these uh, <laughs> I have to I got to push these so I can do the run around Silly me. Yeah, up this part of the route, there's there's two parallel rail, uh, rails, and you can station cars on one of them, but you have to keep the other one free to run around. And uh, and there's another dead end spur off to the off behind these. Alright, so we'll put the handbrake on this coil car and then we'll come over here and uh, uncouple from this from this string. Yep, and then we'll do the run around and while we're doing that uh, continue giving you my thoughts on Train Sim World 2's question and answer time. So, you know, we were talking about the free roam that we enjoy right now. There's a few of the routes like Sand Patch Parade and uh, this route here has these areas where there's some yards and some spurs that you can do some free roam in. But you can't go outside and out on the main line and just, and, you know, haul butt up to the next town or something and then start switching there too I mean it, there's, that's the limitations of Train Sim World 2020 and so but we you know there's a kind gesture for f freight operators like myself when we're not running passengers when, when we just want to enjoy doing some switching uh, that you know you have these areas where there's manual switches and, and uh, you can go uh, have at it but they're you know small blocks of area you know, you, you can't freely have at it on a 40 mile, mile route, you know, and that is the thing I think everybody's wondering, when are we going to be able to have a route that's 40, 80, 100 miles long and have the freedom to stop and swap out cars along the way? We don't have now, and I, I don't get the sense that we're going to, we're going to see that in Train Sim World which puts people still looking at games like uh, Run 8 to, to do that kind of thing. 
And uh, I don't have Run 8, but I did take a good look at it, and that's the thing. It is. It looks fabulous. I mean, from not having played it, but it looks fabulous from the operational standpoint. All the cars, all the miles and miles, and town to town, and freedom to switch things out, multiplay. Um, you know, I, I'm not. I think the multiplay is awesome, and and I'm not one to do multiplay myself. But you have. You have control tower, you have the ability to switch routes, to route trains, uh, numerous trains, and, and do, what you, do what you want. The, the kind of freedom that we're, we've been looking for in, in the train sim world that I don't think we're, we're just gonna see. And if you're wondering if you know you wanna stay with Run 8 and, or try Train Sim World 2, uh, and in that case, I think you wanna stay with uh, Run 8. Um, uh, my 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 hesitation to running is uh, as good as everything I just said it is, and it, and maybe this is more important than anything else is gameplay. I mean, gameplay is is probably the most important thing, and one of the reasons why we love some of these legacy games, even if they're 20 years old or more, is because gameplay was was king at one time, and now graphics is you know taking over and consoles are taking over. Uh, I love graphics, to be honest with you. Uh, to me, I just uh, I get uh, I get sucked up in it, and I, and I see something that looks nicer, slicker, realer, and less cartoonish, and you know I gotta have it. And, and so, unfortunate for me, it uh, sometimes uh, I'm, I'm having a I'm I'm in games that look beautiful, but the gameplay itself is you know not that great. However, uh, I have enjoyed Train Sim World with the beautiful graphics in these free roam environments. I mean, to, to make, it, it's enough to satisfy me and make me happy. Yeah, I certainly wish I could do more and go down the line, but you know, for, for the kind of play I do and the amount of hours and the limitations I have with hours of play, I'm satisfied with uh, with the free roam environments we have now, but I'm looking forward to what I can do creatively in Train Sim World 2. There is no thought of having a career mode. I never hear uh, the, the guys in these question and answer times even talk about career mode. Well, maybe since career mode is so foreign, uh, I don't think I have to explain it to you, but just in case they're listening to us, we should tell them what we mean by career mode. You're a person, and you have a career. And in that career, you, you, you show up to work, you're given some tasks to do, and uh, you run those tasks, you're in that job. You don't just get points to throw a medal around your neck, you, you actually get credits for work that you've done. And then at the end of the day, you have a place to go. You have, you know, a, a room or a place to go of some sort. So in a career mode, uh, you know, I'm looking at, you know, European Truck Simulator or American Truck Simulator or Fern Boss, any of these other games. Uh, you run a day's worth of work or you, or you run uh, wh whatever you do and you get to your destination. You have a place you can go, a hotel room, an office, or somewhere, and when you enter into that, there's a time lapse. You know, if it's a truck stop or whatever, you know, there should be a train depot or something you can walk into, and four hours go by or eight hours go by, there's a time lapse, and it, it can, you know, it'll take you into the next day or, or give you an eight hour pass. So when you come back out again, you can go back and then you can go grab yourself another uh, job task. And you know, that's, that'll take some uh, coding and editing uh, from the developers. Um, everybody else does it. I don't know why they don't even think about it. And then you can have a career and you can go through seasons. I mean, right now you choose a season or you choose the weather or whatever, but in a career mode, I mean, you're gonna live through the seasons. You know, hopefully. And uh, every, just about everything has career modes built in. And, you know, there is no career mode. There, there's no talk of a career mode, you know? So, 
Um, I like that. Uh, you know, if, if nothing else, at least with our free room, could you give us some time compression? If you don't give us a place to park our butt and let eight hours go by, um, give us time compression so we can, we can, we can, you know, walk off to the trees, uh, take a whiz, and then uh, click time compression, and you know, eight, and, and you know, let the time fly by, and and uh, then get back on and start up again, save where you're at or whatever, but. But no, maybe this time compression. I don't know about it. I, I don't believe there is. You know, for hey, if there is, let me know because I never heard about it in this game. So that's uh, what. What do I have next on my list? We talked about no long freight routes like we have in uh, Train Simulator, like you'd have in Run Eight. You know. Um, but yeah, uh, Run 8 uh, to me has that operation, uh, but graphics are, are, well, this is what I gotta say about it. They're, it's not that they're terrible. I, I just feel like I, I've, I'm in a game from 10 years ago, you know? And it's hard in, in 2020 uh, to, to go back 10 years in, in graphics. You know, unless you know you're choosing to play a legacy game or something. I guess once you get into operations and, and run a, it's it's a beautiful thing. You'll forget about that. But I've noticed watching some of the um, live stream, not live, uh, you know, and the, the game plays, the, the game plays where they're playing it for three hours or so, that uh, they they notice that you know there's there's pretty nice. Uh, detail and, and laying out buildings and sidings and spurs and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, we're going past a, 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 a single gate right now for, for road traffic, uh, which that's another thing that they talked about. They're not doing anything about it. It's the single gates. They're going to be down all the time. Run 8, uh, they have those, as far as I can tell, they have those going up and down like you expect. Uh, but once you get out and you're going through the miles and miles of, of rail, you, you get into these dead areas where they didn't, you know, they put some trees uh, and they put a building here too, but uh, you go through some towns where it's just totally incomplete looking. And um, so, uh, is it worth it for the gameplay? Probably is. I mean, it, it probably would be for the gameplay, but it, it is a, it's a tough sell. When you're asking, I think they're asking about $100 for the game. Now you can go on the website and get the base game for $50, but if you want to get any route, uh, you know, and and uh, you know a nice decent besides the route that comes with, they get one more route and then get the a train a car package. Now they're going to give you some cars and some engines to start, but if you want to get and some car another car package, if you know another 20 or 10 or 20 dollars. You're up to about a hundred dollars to get, you know, a, a, a good, uh, sizable game with uh, plenty of diversity in cars and stuff and, and engines. But you know, you, uh, it certainly looks awesome for gameplay. Um, but back to Train Sim World uh, Two, because that's what we're talking about here. Uh, I, th I think. Uh, Oh, uh, the other thing about the scenario editor is they don't have a way for you to share the scenarios you create. Now, they said that it's not that it's impossible. You can probably figure it out. I think what they're telling me is, you know, if you looked at some of my other videos where I show you how to share um, your scenarios you created, I think that's probably still true. You can go into your documents, my games, and then find TS. W or something TSW2 or something and and uh, uh, and, and find the PP is the profile uh, with the scenario name and then find the uh, the saved uh, scenario name that you created and you can go ahead and package those and I think you can share those take those two files and, and give it to somebody else and they can drop them in there uh, my game save games uh, TSW2 uh, folder um, 
but you know I do have a video on that uh, if you want to see how that's done uh, I don't know how well it works uh, hadn't had anybody confirm that it works uh, I've tried it on different machines and it seemed to work for me uh, but that's what I'm talking about there's no there's no nice way built into it I'm just checking here to make sure all of our tank cars have been released all right so we're gonna want to uncouple here and uh, drop off this string of cars and take the tank cars over to the f fill up area for ethanol but what were we talking about we're referring to the uh, sharing of files so yeah uh, they don't have a way to package these sheer, these scenarios up where you can just uh, export them or whatever but you know you can figure out how to do it yourself is what they're saying and um, it, you know I don't know it shouldn't it wouldn't have taken them too long to build a, 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 I mean gosh they can still do it they can have somebody spend about a half hour writing code to pull those two files and uh, compress them and and put an export button on the, on the scenario builder to export them to whatever folder you want and then you can just give them to somebody else I don't know that doesn't seem I can write that code and I'm not even a coder you know I know enough uh, visual basic to write that you know but uh, you know I know they're not writing in you know, probably writing in uh, CC or I, I don't know but you know it's not, I know it doesn't take that much but anyway um, stupid stuff uh, here's some of the things they were talking about you can make points for turning on lights well yeah I kind of talked about that I'm talking about there's no career mode where you where you actually do a job and you and you get credits for that job and you know maybe with those credits you can build a business and maybe you know buy some more you know have your own uh, you know uh, short line or something and you know have a short line business and and uh, you know your own logistics business and and you can buy some box cars with your credits or something or just keep the credits for whatever reason to see how healthy your business is but no we have we 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 get points for turning on lights and turning off lights and flipping switches and and then driving from one destination to another destination and you get 6000 points it doesn't mean anything except for maybe you get a gold medal i i, I don't really it just it doesn't do anything for me and, you know, so I think that this, the, the point system they have now, I think actually I heard somewhere you can just turn it off. Uh, I hadn't even bothered to figure out how to do that. And I guess you just go in settings and you go into that and you turn it off. So we're going to back this train up now into the uh, ethanol area to load up these empty tankers. So I think that was the, the point system is kind of stupid and maybe I should go figure out how to turn it off. It should be easy enough to do. Uh, off the rails mode um, I say this is one of those stupid things because uh, in off the rails mode uh, this is something that they're putting out because it doesn't take any coding at all all they had to do is take limitations undo limitations and and then you can and, and, and by unchecking a box and and you're in off the rails mode and when you're in off the rails mode crazy as it is you can put any inappropriate equipment on any route you want um, uh, it may be fun for somebody out there I may have fun with it one day uh, but outside of that it's it's stupid you know I'm sure uh, some of the younger crowd may have more fun with it you know taking the you know uh, US freight engines and sticking them in you know tunnels over at the uh, European routes and stuff but it's, it's absolutely ridiculous and but why not I mean you could do it so it's just one of those stupid things the good the good is you can plant as many AI trains as you want uh, on the schedule and so I think that's that's fun my question is if I plan an AI train over at the my destination after I spend 20 minutes, whatever, <laughs> these routes are so short, usually it only takes you 20 minutes to get from one to the, one place to the next. But let's say it took me an hour to get to that destination. 
if I plan an AI train that, that's an hour and a half away, I should be able to get off my train and get on the uh, destination AI train. And my question is, can we do that just like we do in a service uh, or a timetable? Get off my, uh, my train that I built in the scenario editor and get on an AI train and start running that one? Can that be done? I don't know. Nobody asked that question. I was, I'm surprised at some of these obvious questions that don't get asked. And, or, or don't even get uh, discussed. Or maybe I'm an idiot and, 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 and I don't see the obvious. The other good thing is we have rail driver support. And uh, as far as I understand, whether it comes out on release or a month or two later, we're going to have a rail driver support and, and support for other controllers. That is absolutely awesome. Um, you know, I, I don't care for the... Uh, the you know, like Xbox controller to run trains. Uh, I actually like it with uh, uh, American Truck Simulator and stuff and uh, European Truck Simulator. I've spent a lot of hours using Xbox controller running the trucks, but for some reason it just doesn't work for the trains. For me, it just doesn't doesn't do it. Um, but um, I do have a rail driver, so that's awesome. But, you know, actually, after spending a few years using Real Driver, it's not my favorite. I mean, I, uh, I have other controllers I'd rather use to run trains with other than Real Driver. Um, that, you know, uh, in combination with the keyboard, to me, uh, give me the tactile uh, feedback and I, I like. But that, that's, that's one of the good things that I think we're all happy about the German high-speed rail I am looking forward to that that's gonna be fun I do like doing passenger trains that high-speed rail is gonna be beautiful and the other uh, new passenger train they have I forgot the name of it because I'm not big on passenger stuff uh, that just looks like a, a lot of fun yeah it looks like we got it all lined up and what we're gonna do now is so I can show you how we do these fill-ups of ethanol uh, park the engine, put it in neutral, put the brake on, and get out, walk up, and go up the stairs. I'm sure you can do this with the uh, free cam, but, uh, you know, it's, it's more fun. Uh, I don't know. I think you can do it with the free cam, but I did not try it with the free cam. So I'm just going to go ahead and you know, walk out and do it. The way we're supposed to do it, go on up the stairs, and I'm not going to do all five of these. I'm just going to show you how one is done, in case you don't know. Uh, what you want to do is turn on the sling and uh, swing that over. So you swing over the, the end effector to for open up the top of the tanker. You just grab a hold of that ethanol hose and attach it to. To the top of the tank jump on over and it's that easy but we now have to uh, pump turn the turn the valve on and let it run so normally at this point I run down the line as it's filling up and go start the others once it fills up it will automatically shut off but uh, I'm just going to show you how to do the one so we'll watch the the, um, the gauge hopefully it's not too dark kind of dark to see with the be in early morning like it is but uh, once once that you hear that it's filled and you see the gauge is full go ahead and close it yep and then you want to jump back over again attach the hose did you notice looking down in there that you can see that it was full go back let me show you this see you can see you can see the ethanol there don't forget to close the cap lock that down and then sling the hose back over and then you would uh, you know we're gonna just uh, uh, unattach these tankers and let them go ahead and fill these fill these up and come back and pick them up another time so my, my thought now is I'm going to run back over with these two engines and go see if I can figure out what's wrong with my string of cars over there. I'm probably going to have to take one at a time until I find out who the problem car is and see if I can uh, 
I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. So that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, but we're done with today's task of, of dropping these tanker cars off. And, you know, that was my rant my thoughts about the uh, question and answer time at TSW2. Um, I am definitely looking forward to it coming out and, and uh, can't wait to uh, play it, give it review. Um, and, and just see all the I, I don't know that's going to look much different I mean it's it's beautiful now and uh, but it's just going to be a an upgrade to the uh, Unreal Engine and so apparently there's probably features they're not ta talking about or telling us about because they they need to release it in a new engine and, and they're probably going to need time to develop new features maybe these will have to hopefully have to do it us being able to control singles and that kind of thing and, and reroute AI trains and have longer routes and things that we don't have now apparently we're, we're gonna we're gonna be able to have uh, longer trains because uh, we're not gonna have the performance hit that we have with train sim world uh, 2020 and I think that's the reason why we don't see that many cars and, and AI traffic outside of the train traffic or just at all because I notice I see a performance drop every time an AI train comes by and it seems like that's the why we have a limitation of how many cars we can drop and probably why they don't want us to drop cars into a static environment static cars into the yards because uh, they're not telling us that <laughs> they're not optimized for that you know but I think that's the truth I think the truth is they're not able to uh, to handle all the AR, I, the static cars we want to drop off and, and populate the environment. They're not ready for that, but I could be wrong. There, there are a lot more trees and stuff, and they're able to do that. But anyway, that's my thoughts, and that was my task for today. And um, it was a pleasure talking to you again. And thanks for watching. And we'll catch you next time.